This week on The Wire, affordability best in 20 years, stimulus revs the economy, and big wins forecast for Brisbane. G'day guys, welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening from the week in finance, real estate, and investment. Before we kick it off, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether they be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, or early retirement. We do it using only what they currently have available to them right now, and we do it with very high customer satisfaction ratings. So if that's something of interest, please reach out. We'd be more than happy to help. Now, of course, if you're a long time follower, welcome back. We love to see your guys' interaction with these posts. So your likes, your loves, your angries, your questions. If you're a first time follower, welcome. Uh, really glad that you're uh, spending some time checking in. I hope this uh, gives you the kind of information that you're after. Uh, and the only thing that I'll ask you guys to do is, um, you know, please make sure you share this post uh, on your social media platforms so that your friends and family can get the benefit of this valuable information. But let's get into the top stories happening this week. So affordability best in 20 years. So housing affordability is the best that's been in two decades with mortgage repayments now consuming the smallest proportion of earnings since 1999. And this comes from the Housing Industry Association. Softer housing Housing markets and a reduction in interest rates combined to improve affordability during the June quarter, while average earnings have also begun to improve modestly. For a home buyer with an average income purchasing a medium price dwelling, and that's assuming a 10% deposit, mortgage repayments will consume the smallest proportion of their earnings since 1999. And this comes from HIA senior economist Jordan Murray. The main reason the HIA affordability index today is comparable with the level in 99, despite house prices rising significantly faster than incomes is that interest rates are 4.6% now compared to 6.7% in 1999. So quite a significant reduction in the interest rates. Murray says average earnings have increased by 113% over the last 20 years, while the median home price has increased by 228%. But lower interest rates mean the cost of servicing alone has remained the same. So stimulus revs the economy. Pessimistic views on the economy are misguided because there was heaps of stimulus in the pipeline from the federal government's income tax cuts and the Reserve Bank's two interest rate cuts. Deloitte Access Economics partner Chris Richardson says in his latest Business Outlook report that people had misinterpreted the RBA's interest rate cuts in June and July and the central bank could have done a better job at communicating the reasoning. Now, rather than being worried about a sharp economic downturn, the RBA wanted to create more jobs and boost wage, wage growth, and that's what the Canberra-based economist says. Richardson says that while there are challenges from a slowdown in consumer spending, low wage growth and global trade stalling, there is heaps of stimulus and it's arriving fast in Australia. The electoral result uh, reduced policy uncertainty, there are big tax cuts, um, hitting pockets in a few weeks, there are interest rate cuts, plus reduced pressures on bank funding costs and a loosening of the noose on lending for housing by the regulators, plus a moderately lower Australian dollar. Moving on to our third top story for the week is big win forecast for Brisbane. So a major jump in house price is forecast for Brisbane over the next three years with other major Queensland cities close behind. Latest analysis by BIS Oxford Economics has forecast 20% growth in house prices in Brisbane with demand driven by its relatively afford uh, with its relative affordability compared to the other large capitals and a pickup in positivity. The residential property prospects, and um, this was from 2019 to 2022, also predict solid growth in Adelaide, 11%, Canberra 10% and Perth 7% uh, and in contrast prices in Sydney and Melbourne were forced forecast to grow at only sing in single digits in terms of percentage growth over the next three years. The latest Deloitte Access Economics Business Outlook has predicted Queensland will be among the biggest, biggest beneficiaries of a major shift in the economy with stimulus coming out of rising coal prices pushed by Chinese demand, expectations that farmers will have a better season and uh, rising house demand driven by interstate migration. BIS uh, Oxford Economics Associate Director Angie Zigo, Zigomanis expects Brisbane to be a big winner, outperforming the slow recovery coming out of the other major capital cities on the eastern seaboard. So guys, that pretty much covers it for the top stories happening this week on The Wire. A couple of things before you go, guys. Please, please interact with these posts, okay? Please uh, to, you know, tell us what you like, what you don't like. Let us know what you want to know more about. If you've got any questions, please send them through as well. Please share this also with your friends and family so they get the benefit of this valuable information. Um, and stay tuned for our Just Ask Tim video series uh, that I'll be coming out probably on Tuesday next week. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if there's something that you want me to talk about in more detail, please send it through. I'll be more than happy to discuss it for you guys, guys. But that's pretty much all from me. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. I look forward to speaking to you early next week. Thanks a lot, guys. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.